They called themselves a post-industrial country. For the last decade, they also have been declaring that their strategy is import substitution. Actually, this strategy was renounced when Russia annexed Crimea and occupied part of the Donbass in 2014. Yes, the sanctions eight years ago were not too strict. They were not bringing together almost all of Europe like nowadays. But nevertheless, Russia had eight years to get prepared for the import substitution. At least their propaganda and official documents said so. Most of the medicine invented here was never produced in Russian. It was imported, but scientists found a blood cancer drug. The idea of import substitution appeared when the communist empire collapsed. In the 90s, the government was so shocked by the scale of import goods coming to Russia that a whole new plan was created to replace foreign technologies, goods and services with Russian ones. That was also the first time when, you know, everything went according to plan. They made a list of the industries that needed the import substitution most. Agriculture, informational technologies, machinery, and some secret stuff forbidden for importing from abroad. As far as we already had dozens of developments, we use them and keep our facility working. The strategies were changing, the plans were updating, the whole centers of import substitution were opened, shining with billions of rubles budgets. They started building cyber universities. They were developing modern agricultural attitude. They were investing in machinery, but... The cyber universities needed foreign experts, because Russian teachers mostly knew how to produce the calculators. The agriculture became a black hole for budgets, because the vehicle parts were stolen instantly, and nothing changed much even for the regions favorable for the harvest. Machinery also had problems. Mostly Russian production of machinery consisted of two parts. Buy machinery in China, change logo. The brightest example of the import substitution is the modern history of Russian automotive industry. From the very beginning, it was a crime against humanity. With the technologies taken from wartime land lease trucks and late 50s Italian franchises, Russian automotive barely changed much. The design made by the five-grade schoolboy, the technologies bought from China and South Korea, and all of that collected on Russian plants with appropriate attitude. It's not surprised that experienced drivers preferred so-called classics, card made in the Soviet era. At least they knew how to repair it by themselves. When technologies don't help, propaganda works. In the middle of 2000s, Kremlin invited foreign influencers to prove that these so-called cars are okay. But even the wonderful American actress Sasha Gray didn't manage to bring it back to life. And she's definitely more experienced in difficult situations than Russian engineers. <laughs> Since 24th of February, the automotive industry has stopped. 85% of so-called car production is paralyzed. Back to the future plans are widely discussed. It's impossible to create a Moskvich from a scratch. We need foreign partners. The only one front where import substitution was successful happened to be the propaganda. They reported about success and innovations so hard that even the authorities started believing that they have substituted the import with Russian goods, especially in 2014, when the first try of sanctions took place. Kremlin proudly said that Russia could live without you, civilized world. But it can't. After three months of war, here's what they write in media and blogs. During last month, 60 IT companies in Russia fired more than 16,000 of employees. Those who didn't freeze major projects. The reason is that founders and investors are getting ready for some kind of economic reduction. There is a different story with import substitution. Now we're talking about conscious refusal, at least for some time, from complex European technologies and switching to more simple production. We can already see the results in the automotive industry. China can't give Russia the latest technology because doesn't have it. Thus, the Russian economy will simplify in the nearest future. The government have already warned about it when told about structural transformation. The year 2022. Obviously 
obviously, the import substitution doesn't work. It turned out that the post-industrial country can't produce even nails by itself. And it explains very well that manic hatred when Russians destroy Ukrainian factories and plants and steal machinery, grains, etc. Not being able to create themselves, they envy everyone who can. And now, occupying Ukrainian territories, they demand to love them. Lazy, dirty, barbaric, scared of studying and developing, but screaming of their superiority.